Have you ever wondered who the beast that was, is not, and yet is in the book of Revelation? Well, in today's video, you're going to find out exactly what this beast represents. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to turn in your Bibles to Revelation chapter 17, and we're going to see an interesting description of a beast here in Revelation 17 and verse number eight. And for those of you who have aren't familiar with the beast that who, you know, the beast that was, is not, and yet is, notice what the Bible says in Revelation 17 and verse number eight. It says, the beast that thou sawest was and is not and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world. When they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I want you to be aware of is that there are two positions that are mainly held by seven day Adventists. OK, and the first position or the, the first interpretation that is typically held by Adventists is that the the according to the seven day Adventist commentary, the part that was represents the pagan Roman Empire. When it says the is not, that represents the Roman Empire once Christianity was accepted or main or or made the the main religion within the Roman Empire. And then the yet is represents when the papacy was established within the Roman Empire. Okay? That's the first um interpretation that is held by a large portion of the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Now, the second view that is held by the Seventh day Adventist Church says that the um, the was represents the papacy. The is not represents the papacy at its fall after its fall in 1798. And the yet is represents the papacy in the last days. OK, so those are the two main focal uh, or the two main interpre interpretations of this view, according to the Adventist commentary. OK, now in order to understand this view or in order to understand what who this beast is, I want to give you a third potential view. OK, now, the first thing I want you to notice is that the beast that was and is not and yet is, we can see that there are three parts to this beast. OK, that's your first key. There's three parts to this, and we can clearly see those three parts defined in the description in Revelation chapter 17. And in case you haven't seen it yet, it is the was the is not and the yet is. OK, so that's a three part system that the Bible is giving us. Now, what I want you to do is ask yourself this question. Where else in the book of Revelation do we see a three part system in the book of Revelation, chapter 16 and verse number 19? We see a three part system and I'm going to read this for you in Revelation 16 and verse number 19. And notice closely what the Bible says in the 19th verse of Revelation chapter 16. It says in the great, it says, uh, here, hold on. It says in the great city was divided into three parts and the cities of the nations fell and great Babylon came in remembrance before God to give unto her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Okay. Now I want you to key in on the part that says the great city was divided into three parts. Okay. Now I need you to understand is that this three part system here that is given to us in Revelation chapter 16 is not a happenstance. It's not a coincidence. And what I want to suggest to you is that the three part system of Babylon is the same three part system of the beast of the apocalypse found in Revelation chapter 17. Now, let's understand that Babylon is consisted of three parts. Well, at least we understand that. But what are these three parts that Babylon consists of? OK, so we have the dragon, we have the beast and we have the false prophet. Now, as Adventists, you should understand that the dragon represents Satan literally. OK, and I believe in Revelation chapter 12, I think it's verse nine. Don't quote me on that, but I think it's verse nine. It ref it tells us that the dragon represents Satan. OK, so there's no disputing that. However, what we also must understand is that spiritually speaking, the dragon also represents the enterprises of Satan. And when I say enterprises, I mean, paganism, heathenism, 
you know, mysticism, all those religions that are directly derived from Satan. Okay. So spiritually, the dragon represents paganism. Okay. And we understand that geographically, the dragon represents the pagan Roman empire. Okay. Now, when we look at the beast, spiritually, we should understand that the beast represents Catholicism, okay? Catholicism of the Dark Ages. But geographically, we understand that the beast represented the Papal Roman Empire, okay? And then last but not least, the false prophet or the second beast spiritually represents false Protestantism, but geographically, it represents the United States of America, okay? And I hope that this is understandable to you. Now, ladies and gentlemen, at the time of Rome or the time of John, the pagan Roman Empire was the empire in power. And so what we must understand is that the pagan Roman Empire, because it was already in power, the pagan Roman Empire is seen as the part of the beast that is the was okay does that make sense so pagan rome was already in power so pagan rome represented the was part of the beast now the papal part of this beast had not yet come into play and so we can understand that because the papacy had not begun yet the papacy represents the part of the beast that is the is not phase of this beast of the apocalypse and then finally it is during the American phase or the United States phase that revives the beast, that speaks with the voice of the dragon, that we can say that America represents the final phase of the beast, the phase that is the yet is part of the beast of the apocalypse, okay? And I hope that makes sense to you as well, okay? Now, what I want you to understand is that what we're describing, and if you're looking at it closely we're describing a beast that has three parts but it's really one beast okay now just looking at it just from the characteristics of it you should see that we are describing a trinity okay a trinity is a three-part system in other words it's a three in one okay and just like you have the father son and holy ghost here you have the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Now, I know in Adventism, there is a debate. And I don't know how big this debate is, but I understand that some of you are of the persuasion that there is no such thing as a trinity, okay? Now, I need you to understand that this video is not meant to persuade you or dissuade you. In other words, it doesn't matter what you believe of the Trinity. What I'm trying to tell you is that Satan does believe in a Trinity, and that Trinity is the dragon, the beast, and the, the false prophet. And what I need you to understand is that everything that God's Trinity or the Godhead has tried to do, Satan has tried to counterfeit it. And we can see this in Scripture because we understand that God first established his belief system, which became known as Judaism, okay? But watch this. The dragon, or Satan, established his belief system, and it was called paganism. And this was to counteract Judaism, okay? Now, God, in order to save mankind, fallen mankind, sent his son, Jesus Christ. The dragon, in order to destroy mankind, sent the beast. Jesus' ministry lasted for three and a half years, but the beast's ministry of persecution lasted for three and a half prophetic years, or 1260 days. Jesus was crucified at the end of his ministry, and the beast received a deadly wound at the end of its ministry. Then Jesus was resurrected from the dead, and then the beast's deadly wound was healed. Then the Holy Spirit was sent to testify of Christ, but the false prophet arrives and makes an image to the beast. The Holy Spirit used cloven tongues of fire in order to bring men into the truth. The false prophet brings fire down from heaven in order to deceive mankind into error. The Holy Spirit brings the seal of God, but you must understand the false prophet causes all to receive the mark of the beast. Ladies and gentlemen, you should see here that it, it should be clear to you that the dragon, beast, and the false prophet are trying to counterfeit the Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. And what we must understand is that in Revelation chapter, as a matter of fact, let's go to Revelation uh, chapter four and verse number eight. And I want you to notice the description 
that God Almighty has. Revelation chapter four and verse number eight. Notice the description. It says, it says, and the four beasts, which and the four beasts had each of them six wings about him. And they were full of eyes within, and they rest not day or night, saying, Holy, holy, Lord God Almighty, which was and is and is to come. Now, the question is, who is this beast of the apocalypse? Who is this beast that was and is not and yet is? In other words, we understand that a beast is a nation. So what nation is representative of you know, pagan Rome, papal Rome, and the United States of America? Well, ladies and gentlemen, you don't have to look at a map. Because I'm telling you right now, there is no nation that, you know, is consist of those three powers. OK, as a matter of fact, the, you know, the pagan Roman Empire and the paper Roman Empire don't really even exist today. OK, as they did in the Dark Ages. So now the question is, well, what nation would represent those three powers at the end of time? Are, is there going to be a, a kingdom that's going to be formed somewhere on this planet and and it's going to be a revival of the pagan Roman Empire? Not exactly, ladies and gentlemen. And so what I want you to understand is that the beast that was, is not, and yet is, is not necessarily a geographical kingdom with, you know, with, with its own, you know, government and, and that type of thing. What I want you to see is that the beast of the apocalypse, the power that was and is not, and yet is, is a union. Okay. And let me read to you from, from the spirit of prophecy. So I can show you that that's exactly what this beast of the apocalypse is. Ellen White says in Maranatha, page 187, she says, these have one mind. There will be a universal bond of union, one great harmony, a confederacy of Satan's forces. So we see here that it is a union, ladies and gentlemen, but notice what else she says. She says, and this is from Spirit of Prophecy, volume four, page 405. She says, Protestantism will yet stretch her hand across the gulf to grasp the hand of spiritualism. She will reach over the abyss to clasp hands with the Roman power. And under the influence of this threefold union, our country will follow in the steps of will follow in the steps of Rome and trampling on the rights of conscience. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what I'm trying to get you to understand is that this union represents the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. Now, ladies and gentlemen, besides Revelation chapter 16, there's only one other place that we can clearly see the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet all working together, all active at the exact same time. And that is in the book of Revelation. I want you to go there with me. Excuse me. The, <laughs> of course, it's in the book of Revelation, uh, but it's in the, the Revelation chapter 13. I, and I want you to go there with me. Revelation, the 13th chapter. And notice what the Bible says. And this is something maybe you haven't noticed before, or uh, maybe you've read it and maybe didn't think about it. But there's only one other place besides Revelation 16 that we see all three represented together. And notice what verse number 11 says in Revelation, the 13th chapter. It says, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth and he had two horns like a lamb. OK, so we rep we, we recognize that this first power represents the second beast or the United States of America or the false prophet. OK, now notice what it says after that. And he spake as a dragon. So here we see the false prophet and the dragon are both active at the same time. Now, notice what verse number 12 says. And he exercises all the power of the first beast before him and causeth the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast whose deadly wound was healed. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you should you should be able to see that. In Revelation 13, verses 11 and 12 is the only place outside of Revelation 16. Obviously, their destruction is, is a place where they're active, but, but I'm, I'm, I'm speaking here before, the, before their fall. It is the only place that we can see the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet at the height of their power or at the height of, uh, of, of, of deceiving mankind. And it is seen here under the dispensation 
of the United States of America. Now, as Seventh-day Adventists, you also must understand is, is that these three powers are also represented in Revelation by the number 666. You see, what we must understand is that when we look at the succession of empires, that world empires that try to destroy God's people, we can see that in that succession, the pagan Roman Empire was the sixth power uh, in that succession. Now, what we also must understand is that that empire, the pagan Roman Empire, was called the dragon, okay? Now, the seventh world empire, or the papal Roman Empire, also known as the beast, when it came upon the scene in Revelation chapter 13, it says it had the power and seat and authority from the dragon, the sixth power. So we understand that the sixth power gave its seat have gave its power, seat, and authority to the seventh power, okay? Now, you, the United States of America, or the false prophet, or the second beast, is the eighth power. And we see here in Revelation chapter 13, verse 11, that the eighth power had the voice of the dragon, which is the sixth power. And so what we must understand is that the number of Babylon is not really six, seven, and eight. The number of Babylon is six, six, six. But it's under the dispensation of the United States of America that this union becomes established or empowered, okay? And what I want you as Seventh-day Adventists to understand is that the number 666 is not the number of the Pope. The number 666 is the number of the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet under the dispensation of the United States of America. Now, regarding 666, we are reminded in the book, Word to the Little Flock, that 666 is not the number of the Pope, it is the number of the United States of America. Okay, now, and, and I'm gonna show you this. Notice what she says in Word to the Little Flock. She says, I saw all that would not receive the mark of the beast and of his image in their foreheads or in their hands could not buy or sell. I saw that the number 666 of the image beast was made up. Now, in case you're wondering, what is the image beast? You're about to see that she makes a, a, um, a distinction between the image beast and what she calls the beast. And you're going to see that the beast, she refers to that as the papacy. And you're also going to see that she refers to the image beast as the United States of America. These aren't my words. These are her words. Notice what she says if we continue the quote. She says, and that it was the beast that changed the Sabbath and the image beast had followed on after and kept the popes and not God's Sabbath. Ellen White's position on this image beast is that it clearly was the United States of America. So, ladies and gentlemen, what I want you to understand is that the mark of the beast pertains to the papacy, but it is the 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 uh, the 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 number six 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 that refers to the image beast or the United States of America. And the reason why it refers to the United States of America it is because that it is under the dispensation of the United States that powers spiritual Babylon or the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. They all three come together in order to fulfill the devil's agenda, okay? And so this is why we must understand that when Revelation 17, 11, uh, as a matter of fact, let me let me go there real quickly in, in, in the Bible. Revelation 17, 11, when Revelation 17, 11 says, and the beast that was and is not, even he is the eighth and is of the seven and goeth them to perdition, we must understand that this beast here is referring to the United States of America. All right. Now, um, and this is why my position on this eighth head is that it cannot be the papacy. And this is why the yet is cannot be the papacy. It is because the U.S. is the, the power that causes all to receive the papacy's mark, okay? And so this is why I'm telling you that the eighth power must refer to the United States of America. Now, we're looking at this power in the last days. And the question now is, well, what? how is this Babylon 
the spiritual Babylon going to be manifested, okay? Because even though it's a spiritual power, it has to have some sort of tangible manifestation in the last days in order to get people to worship Satan. If we look at the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet, we understand that pagan Rome doesn't exist or imperial Rome doesn't exist today, okay? But the closest thing that we have to imperial Rome today is Europe, okay? Or the European Union, however you, uh, you know, whichever one makes more sense, but I, you know, I look at it as Europe today, okay? So I would say the dragon represents Europe, the Vatican uh, represents the beast, and obviously the United States of America is what represents the false prophet, okay? Now, the question now is how do these three come together and create this worldwide union at the end of time in order to deceive God's people, okay? Now, here's what I believe. I believe that in the final days that Europe will control the money, okay? So the money will, will come from Europe, the religion will come from the Vatican, and the military enforcement will come from the United States of America. And these three powers all together are the powers that will get the world to worship the beast. So now the question is, well, where are we going with this? Where is, how is this beast going to be manifested in the final days? Okay. So let's just say it is Europe, the United States of America and the Vatican working together. Okay. Let's just say, you know, even though we haven't proven that, we don't know that for certain, but let's just say that is the core group of this spiritual Babylon in the last days, the tangible part of spiritual Babylon, because we understand that Babylon is a spiritual entity, um, but we are, we're giving it a tangible address. Okay. Okay. So the question is how or, or where are we going from here, okay? And when we look at the description that is given in uh, Revelation 17, 8, we can kind of gain an understanding of how this union will be manifested. Let's go to Revelation 17 and verse number eight. Revelation 17 and verse number eight. The Bible says, the beast thou sawest was and is not, and, and watch this next part and shall ascend out of the bottomless pit and go into perdition. And they that dwell on the earth shall wonder whose names were not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they behold the beast that was and is not and yet is. OK, so now the question is, what is this bottomless pit that the that John the Revelator is referring to. OK, Ellen White actually gives us a working definition of this bottomless pit. And we're going to read what she says about this in the Great Controversy, page 658. Notice what she says here. She says that the expression bottomless pit represents the earth in confusion and darkness is evident from other scriptures. OK, so she says that the bottomless pit represents the earth in confusion and darkness. All right. And if you're paying close attention and you're looking at the conditions of this planet, you should understand that this darkness and confusion or this confusion and darkness is not just a literal darkness of the sun and confusion. This is a spiritual darkness and confusion as well. So it is likely that the spiritual confusion and darkness precedes the physical confusion and darkness, okay? But we're understanding that we are witnessing the earth right now being terror transformed into this bottomless pit. And the reason why we say this is that there is confusion and darkness on all sides. We see that there is confusion and darkness with gender identity. We're seeing that there is confusion and darkness with politics. We're seeing there's confusion and darkness with racism. We're seeing there's confusion and darkness with abortion. We're seeing confusion and darkness with our governments. We're seeing confusion and darkness with sex. We're seeing confusion and darkness with war. We're seeing, ladies and gentlemen, confusion and darkness with the word of God. Now, ladies and gentlemen, what you must understand is that as this war, as the world is transforming into this bottomless pit, you must see here that while the earth is in this state of confusion and darkness, while we are in this position of this bottomless pit, you must understand is that during this time, there's going to be a union that is going to arise from the earth in this darkness and confusion. And you can call this union what you want. You can call it dragon, beast, and false prophet. You can call it 666. You can call it spiritual Babylon. But what you must understand is that Revelation chapter 17 calls it the beast that was 
is not and yet is. And it is this union that will begin with the United States, with Europe and with the Vatican that will get the world to worship Satan. They will unify the world on common points. And we're going to see one day that the world will be deceived into worshiping Satan himself. He'll be, you know, he'll, he'll be impersonating Christ, but the world will be worshiping Satan unbeknownst to many of them. Okay. They'll be deceived. But so ladies and gentlemen, the question now is what is our duty as seven day Adventists? Our duty as seven day Adventists is to simply sound the alarms. We're not trying to be alarmist. We're not trying to scare people into the kingdom. Our duty is simply to present the truth and remembering that it is not our duty to convert individuals, but simply to present and allow the spirit of God to do what the spirit of God does. And we see here now that this end time scenario is now aligning and it is soon to take place on this world. Okay. And the thing that I want to leave you with is that Never focus so much on the crisis that we lose focus on the Christ. I'm the Seventh-day Adventist watchman, and now you understand the true meaning of the beast that was, is not, and yet is.